What's up guys, welcome back. In this video I thought we'd make some very cool spacey planet materials and I've got a couple textures here and just a quick little sphere mesh which is just a sphere and I've just gone and made it sort of higher subdivision count so it's a bit smoother. We don't see many of those facets around the edges when it's uh, when it's blank. And the, the textures I've got here is just an earth map and a Mars map. You can get plenty of textures though from solarsystemscope.com slash textures. They have very high resolution shots of all of our planets in the solar system. So you can go and download them all totally for free, totally free to use. And uh, yeah, you can get into it that way. So without further ado, let's uh, just make ourselves a new level. Because we're going to start in a blank, straight up black, empty map. And once... Once my tutorial map here is saved, there we go. So let's just drop our planet sphere in the center there. We'll reset it back to zero and we'll focus that on the screen just like that. So there's no lights or anything, so it's appearing totally unlit. Uh, so let's go and make ourselves a material for it. So let's just right click in our content browser here. We'll make a new material. Uh, let's call it planet underscore mat and then open him up. All right, so the first thing, we'll just drop our uh, textures in here and I'll clip it back up here. And I suppose we'll uh, start with the basics. So let's handle our clouds first. So we'll grab our clouds over here. We'll hold in P and click to get a panner node, which is just going to move our texture in an X or a Y direction, or both if you wanted to go diagonally. But we just wanted to go a little bit in the X direction. So over here on speed X, let's just type in 0.002, something very, very low. And we'll plug that into our UVs. So it's going to, this node here is going to move our texture along its UVs here. In fact, if we right click and start previewing, you can see we've got a little bit of motion there. It'll be easy to see, I guess, if I made it faster. So let's just crank this up to like one. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So you can see how the uh, how the, the texture is moving. So let's set that back to 0 0.002. We just want some very slow, very subtle cloud movement. And let's also, well, we'll stop previewing this. And we'll go ahead and uh, hold in three and click for a color. Let's just convert this to a parameter and call it cloud color. And while we're at it, let's also convert this into a parameter too, just in case we want to use uh, different different cloud materials. So we'll call this um, planet clouds. Man, can't spell today. Planet clouds. And we'll just get a multiply. So we'll multiply our planet clouds. Uh, by the color that we picked and so that we can see it. Let's just set it back up to Just a straight-up white. Okay, there we go. The second thing is our um, Is our actual, you know base texture for our planet, but uh, well first let's get ourselves another multiply So hold it M and click for multiply then hold it S and click for a scalar parameter and we'll call this one our cloud amount so that we could multiply this value by the result of this little tree here and control how much of these clouds appear on our final uh, final uh, material. So we'll default that value to one just so we get the whole texture. And then let's hold an A and click for an add node and we'll add the result of this multiply to our planet texture here. And then we'll copy and paste this panel and plug it into our UVs. And this one, instead of 0 0.002 like our clouds, let's just set that to a negative. So the planet's going to spin in the opposite direction uh, that the clouds do. And we can right click this add, start previewing, and we can see what that looks like, uh, first of all. So it's very, very basic so far. Uh, this is just two textures moving past each other. So we're gonna go forward some more and uh, expand out what functionality that we have. The first thing that we'll do is uh, we'll create like a, a refraction effect. Uh, I don't know if you guys have watched my, my Earth material video. We're sort of making something similar to that, but with some different features and some different parameters that we can play with. Uh, let's make ourselves another color. I might just copy and paste this one. Instead of cloud color, we'll call it our atmosphere color. So this will be uh, our rim light around the edges of our um, of our planet so that it gets that sort of, you know, depth, that sort of refraction effect that, uh, that real planets have. So we'll hold an M and click to get ourselves on the scalar, hold an S and click to get us, uh, <laughs> I mean a multiply node and a scalar parameter. And we'll call this one our atmosphere, uh, atmosphere strength. And this will be something fairly high, like uh, 200. And we'll plug this into our multiply and connect our atmosphere color. There we are. And we'll need another multiply and a Fresnel. So if we right click and type in Fresnel, which is spot like Fresnel, but it's named after the guy that, that uh, developed it, I guess. So it's a Fresnel. And if we right click this and start previewing it, you can see what this node does. So it's going to uh, create that that edge lighting around the 
well, around the edges that we're going to be using for our uh, atmosphere over here. And we'll need another scalar parameter, so I might just copy and paste this one. Uh, this will be a, we'll call this one our Fresnel strength. And this will be something like, we'll set it down to like three for the time being, and plug this into our exponent in. So this is going to control the power of our Fresnel. In fact, if we preview this again, and we can manipulate these values, so if we set it up, you know, higher, we can go, so the higher we go, the thinner this rim light is going to appear. Set it down to like one, it's going to be very, very low. And if we rotate around, so it's always going to be central. So we're always going to get that effect, no matter which angle we're looking at the at the planet. But for now, we'll set it up to like three and uh, leave that go. So let's, uh, we'll stop previewing that. In fact, I might copy and paste this scalar and I'm going to leave the names the same so that in our instance later on, uh, there'll only be one entry called Fresnel strength, but we'll be able to manipulate both of these values um, with the same you know, with the same entry in the instance. So let's uh, right click here, we'll get ourselves a power. We need a power node. And we'll plug our Fresnel into the base, our uh, scalar here into the exponent. And then we can connect our atmosphere color to our Fresnel light. And then when we right click and don't wanna do that, disable real time preview, start previewing. There we go. So we get some uh, some real brightness there coming out of our, uh, coming out of our Fresnel light. And we can change this color too. So we can, you know, manipulate some some different effects there and experiment with different sorts of sorts of things. So let's stop previewing that. And the next thing we'll do is something a little trickier. We'll make ourselves a little bit of space here. Let's see. Um, we'll get ourselves another color here, but this one we're not going to use as a color. We're going to use it as a location vector in the uh, in in world space. So we'll call this one light direction because it's going to control uh, where the sun is. Uh, based on how this material is going to be to be treating it. And this saves us a little bit of overhead because all of the calculation in materials is done on the GPU, not the CPU. So anything that we can offload onto the GPU is going to help us for optimization. And controlling where the light is coming from, or rather where the material thinks the light is coming from, is one of those ways that we can optimize things just a little bit. So if we uh, right click here, we'll get the pixel normal. So the direction of the normal, where the, where the pixel is on screen. And uh, the dot product of this of these two vectors. So if we get dot, there we go. We get the dot product of these two vectors, and we're going to clamp these values so we don't get any extraneous sort of weirdness going on. We just want to clamp from zero to one, and then a multiply node. Hold an M and click, and we'll just multiply these two together. So far, so good. So to incorporate uh, what we have here into our, uh, our you know our texture tree here. Let's just, we'll make ourselves another add node and we'll add the result of our multiply to the result of this clamp. And then this add will go into a multiply node. <laughs> we use a lot of multipliers uh, that will multiply with our, our base textures. So we can preview this. We can preview everything as we move along, but it's about at this stage where you can really see uh, the uh, sort of the, the final effect. So the result of this little section here is going to be blacking out um, the side of the planet where, well, controlled by our light direction. So we can even, we can even see how this works. It'll uh, take a little bit of time to compile, but wherever we put this, uh, this color, this vector, it's going to change, you know, where the, where the material thinks the light is coming from, which is a handy way, you know, to, to sort of have that little bit of extra control. And our Fresnel here as well is working well with the atmosphere. We can dial all of these values in, all of these green scalars and all of these colors and vectors. We can change in our uh, in our material instances later on. Uh, speaking of, let's make this texture sample a parameter, so we can do just that, and we'll call it our planet surface. There we go, and we can stop previewing this. We're nearly done. So let's grab our main material attributes here, because we don't need all of these, and we're going to use it in a particular way. So let's get our blend mode here. We'll set it to translucent and unlit. There we are. So now we don't have any of these uh, to go with except for emissive color and opacity. And it's our opacity which will come out of this clamp here, come out of our uh, light direction. Because instead of just blacking out the side of the uh, the side of the planet that we're not going to be seeing, we can just make it invisible. So from our clamp, let's come out of here into another power. So we're multiplying it by a, a factor. In this case, just a factor of two. We're not going to not going to muck around with scalars on this one. Add another multiply and this one just over here in the node we'll just multiply it by two and so we're just going to double the result of this power 
And then I'm just gonna copy and paste this clamp and then clamp it back to zero and one. And this will just plug straight into opacity. And there you can see. So now we're just making that side of the planet disappear. And this is useful. I mean, if it's just black space and you have like stars and a space map, then you, you might not want to do this because you don't want to be able to see through the planet. You know, you just want to, you know, conceal the stars that are behind it. But if it's something like, um, like if you have an environment where there's a planet in the distance, very close to, you know, the, the, the planet that you're standing on, then you might want to do this just so that, you know, it looks a little bit nicer when it's, uh, when it's in the scene, but we'll cover that a little bit later. So, uh, out of this add node here, we'll do one final thing. Uh, we'll come out of here into another multiply. No, no, that's what we got one. We already got the multiply, <laughs> my bad. Uh, but we'll make another multiply, plug this in, hold it S and click for another scalar. This will be our glow crank. Control how much it glows. Uh, this will be a value of something like one, uh, I don't know, 1.5. Plug it into our multiply and then hold an L and click for a lerp node. This is a linear interpolate. And what this does is it's going to take in two values, an A and a B, and this alpha value is going to tell the material how much of A or B to uh, to show through. In this case, let's hold in one and click just for a constant. We just want a value of zero. So we'll just leave that in there. The B value will be our multiplier and the alpha will be the result of this clamp and the lerp will plug into a missive. All right, so there is our planet material, at least in its uh, most raw form. So just off the top of my head, like these scalar values, they're not the they're not the best, but that's sort of that's why we do this. So we'll save this material because we can manipulate all of these in a material instance. So back in the editor, let's right click our planet uh, material, create material instance, and we'll drop it onto our sphere, and then we can play with some values. Okay, with our instance uh, up and going. We can manipulate uh, all of these values that we set up in our material earlier. So we'll just tick all of these and let's see here. So we can look at our planet either in our material here or in our world, um, depending on depending on what takes you fancy. So let's see what kind of things we can do here. Let's set our atmosphere. Um, well, actually, as we'll probably know, Mars doesn't have clouds, <laughs> not like not like Earth, but I've got a few more textures here that we can play with. So let's get our Venus atmosphere. And it's a bit thick at the moment, so let's drop this way down. Um, hmm, that's atmosphere strength minus 0.25, something like cloud amount. Um, um, <laughs> too high, we can go 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, uh, yeah. Not sure. In fact, actually, where's that cloud amount? Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's multiplying. Yeah. Multiplying our colors here. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's come back here for our strength. Uh, we can set it down to say two, our glow crank 0 0.05, probably a bit too low. Um, here we are. What else we got? Uh, cloud amount. Uh, what about our atmospheric color? We could probably control this somehow. Uh, bring this back up. Cloud color. Make that quite low. And obviously our light direction, which we can change here to, you know, to manipulate where the where the light is is coming from. All right. So we'll hit OK on that. We'll get our Fresnel strength. Can we can we change this? Where's our glow crank? There we are. Um, we can bring our atmosphere strength up a little bit, get that rim light cranking. Um, glow crank, come down a bit. It's all just a matter of manipulating values and playing with things that, you know, that uh, that look good to you. So let's um, let's head back to our to our map. So I'll open my tutorial map back up. Um, let's save all this. Uh, the, we'll call it the. This will be our planet. Planet level. Here we go. And because I've done this once before, let's go to our outliner here. I'm just going to grab my planet mesh and make him visible. <laughs> and as you can see, we have a nice, uh, nice Mars here sitting just in the distance, just beyond the clouds, just outside the atmosphere. And there's a few more things that we can do. For example, uh, if we come out of this lerp here, let's say, actually, we'll come out of this add. So come out of this add into a desaturation node. Hold an S and click from the scalar, and we'll call this the saturation. And plug this in, and hook this up to our multiplier. 
So it'll do nothing because it's obviously at uh, zero, which a little confusing. It's a desaturation node, but our node is called saturation. So with a saturation of zero, you would think it'd be desaturated, but actually that's the saturated version. It's uh, probably my fault for, for not doing, uh, for not naming things properly. Um, uh, where am I? Okay, so here's our here's our instance um, saturation. So we put our saturation up to one and save. Oh, am I using the wrong material? Oh uh, yeah, all right, so we'll drop that back. There we go, so we can we can properly desaturate our uh, our planet here and then let's see, where's our, so here's our level. And then manipulate our light direction, something like that. And we can get these nice planets to sit just outside our, uh, uh, you know, just outside the, uh, what am I trying to say? The the environment, the, you know, our, our space. So we can hit G and we can hide the uh, these things. We can hit F11. We can go full screen, and this might make a might make quite a nice thumbnail for the video. So thanks guys for watching along this far. I hope you've all had fun. Special thanks to Kyle Hall for developing the original material. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me directly, the best way to do so is on Discord. There will be a link down in the description below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. I'd love to see your screenshots too if you followed along at home. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.